Thank you again for being here this evening. Um, my name is Argeria and I am an ISPO advisor. Um, thank you all for coming and joining us tonight. Um, we are so excited to welcome you all to UCSD. On behalf of the International Students and Programs Office, also known as ISPO, we are thrilled to um, We will be talking a little bit today about at UCSD, um, what to expect for the quarter, and we're, we are going to have a wonderful student panelist that will go over some really great information for you all today. So welcome. Alrighty, a few housekeeping rules before we begin. Um, you are on listen, listen only mode, which means that you can hear us, but we can't hear you. For now, <laughs> we will be de dedicating time to reading out your questions that you put in the chat um, in our Q&A box. So feel free to utilize both of those throughout our session today. Next, we are recording this session. So at the end, this orientation will be posted on our iwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, so please be sure to check that out. Um, if you missed anything from today's session or have friends that are not able to attend, also let them know that they will be able to access this recording through that website. Lastly, as I mentioned, we will be having a Q&A section at the end of our session, so please be sure to ask us questions, um, submit those to us, um, even if we're not able to answer them today throughout our chat. Um, during the Q&A portion of the session, we'll do our best to make sure we provide those answers to you through email or via Zoom advising, uh, which can be accessed through our icontact.ucsd.edu. Right, um, so I wanted to introduce ourselves. Um, again, my name is Argeria Williams and I am an international student advisor here at ISPO. Um, I'm also a former current J1 student specialist. I'm joined today by my colleague, Felicia, Felicia Young, um, who is our sponsored students and special programs coordinator, as well as our EAP advisor and J1 student specialist. Okay, um, so today's session will have relevant information for our EAP students who are planning to study here for this winter quarter. Um, so this will have relevant information about preparing for your program at UCSD, things to consider and keep in mind, as well as some expert advice from our students. Uh, we'll be, we will talk about your support systems on campus, go into some great updates for the winter quarter, some really important time-sensitive reminders, um, as well as um, great information from our three current current and former EAP students. Finally, we'll go over some important deadlines and reminders, and then we'll talk about a crucial part of your exchange, which is about getting social. Um, we have designated our orientation social programming in a virtual format, so it can be easily for you all to get started with meeting each other and hopefully attending some of our wonderful um, in-person um, EAP sessions that we will be having. Alrighty, so we know you have done a lot of work to join us here today, a lot of prepping, planning, packing, figuring out your schedules, your classes, um, so we know how exciting that is and how much work that has been, um, so we are really excited to have you here. As you prepare to start your program, know that you can always come to ISPO. We are always here to answer any questions that you may have, whether it be related to your F1 visa or your academic status or program. We're here to help you or connect you with uh, people on campus that can help better address your questions or concerns. Alrighty, so now I will turn it over to my colleague, Felicia, who will go over our next slide about our team at ISPO. My apologies. Um, all right, so our ISPO team is made up of 20 um, people, our advisors, our administrative staff, and then we also have some student assistants. Um, we are here to help you understand your immigration status, rules for working on and off campus, if you're traveling, and then how to just navigate life in the United States and at UCSD. So we do programming as well, and our word for programming, um, involves putting on events, putting on um, different social events and um, other programming type things um, in order for you to have the best experience while you're studying at UC San Diego. And so you're gonna have a team of people um, on campus to rely on. So 
ISPO is going to be here for any questions you have, and we are here to help make sure that you stay and remain um, in valid visa status while you're here studying with us. Um, you will also have a college advisor. So all of you are assigned to one of our seven colleges. They have academic advisors. So if you have any questions about what classes to take, um, prerequisite for courses, um, those college advisors are going to be able to help you out. They have drop-in advising as well as um, virtual advising. Our career center is really important for any students who are thinking about you know, doing on-campus or off-campus employment. Um, they also do resume reviews, um, practice interviews. So we really um, encourage students to take advantage of all the things the Career Center has to offer. And then also your professors and the faculty, as well as your TAs for your classes. So some of your classes are going to be really large. Um, professors are going to hold office hours if you need additional assistance, or if you just want to drop in and talk with them about what was interesting that you um, talked about in class that day. So we really do encourage, you know, looking at the entire team of people that are here to help you. And in terms of arriving for winter, um, we always just want to make sure that you have all of this list of resources. Um, and then Argeria is going to cut and paste them into the um, chat for all of you. Um, we just want to make sure that you are aware of all of the uh, most recent and updated policies and regulations, and these are also found on the ISPO website. Awesome. Thank you so much, Felicia. Alrighty, now for our most anticipated part of our orientation, our student panel discussion. So without further ado, I would like to give a warm welcome to our three panelists. Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Let me do some clicking. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> Let me get everyone's name on our screen. Alrighty, our three wonderful UCSD EAP panelists. Um, our first student is Kena Ren. Um, her home country is China. Her home university is Fudan University. Her major is human biology. And her favorite experience at UCSD is discussion sessions for courses. Um, her number one advice for all of you incoming EAP students is to find a lab to work in. Our next student is Subin Kim. Her home country is South Korea and her home, universe, home university is Yonsei University. Her major is business economics and her favorite part of UCSD is beginning of the quarter excitement. And lastly, our last student or alum is Michael Wong. His home country is Indonesia. His home university is the University of Hong Kong. His major is computer science. And his favorite part about UCSD is pledging to Alpha Phi Omega. So warm welcome to our three panelists. We're so excited to have you join us today and help us guide us through some really great information for our incoming, um, our current EAP students. All right. I'll just add that Michael is no longer at UCSD. He's actually back studying at his home university. So it is so early in the morning. So thank you for joining us um, from across the world and waking up so early to be here with us. Yes, thank you, Michael. All righty. So we'll go ahead and jump right into our first question, which is regarding arriving and setting in, settling into UCSD. So our first question is, what was your experience in arriving to the U.S. slash UCSD? What was the official check-in process like? Okay, so we'll start with, with Kena. Um, so it's like the official check-in process is um, you should um, go to the ISPO uh, official website, then you will find a link to iPortal, and then you go to iPortal, find the service uh, in the toolbox, and then that's where you can request um, a check-in. Uh, and then you fill in the blanks, upload the files. Uh, in you know, uh, just as a reminder, you have to finish all the check-in process in within 10 days after you arrive in the United States. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, just feel free to contact ESPO officials. Like you can um, contact them through um, email or like the virtual meeting. They're always there for you. Yeah. Same. 
Thank you so much, Kina. Yes. So we've, um, we definitely, if you have not done so yet, make sure that you submit your check-in form. It's really important. It's the way that we register you as arriving and starting your program here with us in the United States. Um, I dropped the link in the chat box for, for um, the check-in form and instruction. So if you haven't done so yet after today's session, please be sure to go on our website and complete it. It shouldn't take you more than about 10 minutes to submit that form. Awesome. All righty. Moving on to our second question. Did you attend any welcome events and what was your experience with settling in at UCSD? All righty. On this question, we're going to have Sobin start us off. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm Sobin and nice to meet you. And one of my favorite attending welcome events was Coffee Hour by ISPO. So coffee hour is basically you just like go there and grab coffee and there's like free coffee, free snacks. It's usually at like 10 a.m. And so like I went, I actually went there by myself because at the first time I arrived in UCSC, I had like no friend at all. So I just went there by myself. And actually coffee hour is like where I met my friend Kana. And <laughs> I was able to like meet a lot of people. So like it was just my like first day of our arrival, but I was able to like make friends from like Korea, China, Japan, India, like friends, Germany, and I still like hang out with them a lot. And so yeah, just um feel free to like um go to coffee hour. There's like free coffee, free snacks, and also there's like raffle event. So if you get lucky, you can win some like um stuff. So I actually like won this won this cup. I got this from like coffee hour event as well so yeah like don't hesitate to attend event it's like so much fun and you will be able to make a lot of friends from the events nice thank you so much Sobin that's so great to know and I love that cup very nice <laughs> next Kana did you have anything else to add um because I I also attended the coffee hour I want to like um share with you like I met a lot of because I think coffee hour is open to both undergraduate and uh, graduates mm -hmm. and PhD students so like if oh I met a lot of you know CS or ECE majors there if like you are interested in research or like um if you want to know more about what it is like to be a graduate or PhD mm -hmm. like more academic things you can just go there and ask them mm -hmm. yeah this is really helpful it's like you don't usually have the chance to meet these graduate PhDs and mm -hmm. you can talk to them so freely it's yeah so that's why I like ISPO coffee hour same thank you so much for that Kana and lastly, Michael, did you have anything you would like to add? Um, I think I attended that one as well, coffee hours. Uh, I was only there mostly for donuts. Um, but yeah, you should try it out. It's kind of fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, so definitely uh, bookmark and attend coffee hours. It's one of our really great events. Um, really fun um, right here in the office or outside of our office. Um, so close by. Um, and, and lots of great ways to network and meet students. So, alrighty. So we'll move on um, to the next slide. Alrighty. So before we go on to the next topic, I just wanted to touch on a, a few important reminders about maintaining your J1 status. Um, that should be familiar to you all, since you all should have completed the iTriton online tra online training program. Remember when ISPO first issues you your Form DS-2018, you hold a status that we refer to as an initial. This means you're ready to start your program on the program start date listed on your document. Once you arrive to the U.S. and start your program, your status will change to active. This is the check-in process that our panelists and we have discussed um, in the first, first question. From there, you will need to ensure that you are maintaining status, meaning that you follow our rules and regulations for the duration of your program. Again, all of these rules and regulations are covered in the iTriton online training. Um, they include enrolling full time in a minimum of 12 units, updating your DS 2019 whenever that is needed, um, maintaining a good academic standing and integrity, following all federal regula regulations and rules, and lastly, obtaining work authorization when that is needed. Um, so you will have to follow these rules up until the end of your 
uh, program end date on your DS 2019 document. If you don't follow these J-1 rules and regulations, you can then find yourself falling out of status and acquiring unlawful presence while in the U.S., which of course is not a good thing. Um, so you always want to make sure that you're maintaining status in the U.S. Um, if you ever have any questions about how something may impact your J-1 status, um, definitely come ask us at ISPO. We have a model that no question is a silly question. It's always better to know before you take action and have it impact you in the long run. So please feel free to reach out to us if you ever do have any questions or concerns um, about pursuing something um, and making sure you stay in status. Once you have completed your J-1 program and have maintained your status throughout the entirety of the program, you'll go into something we refer to as a grace period. Uh, this grace period is a 30-day period allow you to stay in the U.S., travel within the U.S. if that's something that you would like to do. Um, if eligible, you have the option to also apply for academic training, uh, which is employment authorization, which will allow you to stay in the U.S. and to work. Transfer to another school in the U.S. if you are pursuing or planning to pursue your education here. Um, the vast majority of our EAP students decide to use those 30 days to travel in the U.S. and make plans to depart um, but a few do pursue internships and employment, um, and we'll be covering that later in our next couple of slides. Alrighty, so I know we've already talked about this and touched on this, but again, because it's such an important reminder, we're going to have it one more time. Um, make sure everyone submits the check-in form. Um, again, you'll be able to find that check-in form here on our iPortal. Um, again, won't take you more than 10 minutes to submit. Um, these are the steps and the reminders for that you will have to do once now that you have arrived. So please make sure you have done it or we'll be doing it in the next few days. Um, we ask that the check-in form be submitted within 10 days of arriving to the U.S. Um, so please make sure you are submitting that form to us. All righty, moving on to a new topic, enrollment in courses. Alrighty. So panelists, what was your experience with enrollment in classes? We're going to, um, I know there's a lot of questions here, so we'll break it up. So we'll start with Sobin. Sobin, what was your experience with enrollment in classes at UCSD? How many classes did you take or are you taking? Um, did you ever have to drop below the full-time limit here at UC San Diego? And if so, what did that process look like? Okay, so like when I first um, encountered UC ASCII enrollment website, um, first time it was kind of like complicated, but as I got used to it, it was okay. And in the fall quarter, which was my first quarter, um, I took four classes uh, at the beginning and I decided to drop one because the one was 8 a.m. classes and I had like pretty hard time waking up there early. But yeah, <laughs> and now I'm taking five classes and now I have 8 a.m. class every day because I'm trying to becoming an early girl. So yeah, it, and also you just um, just remember that you should take at least 12 units to maintain um, your J-1 visa, which is like very important. And also another important thing is like, I think many of you guys came from schools where they uh, use semester system instead of quarter systems. So in semester-based school, you mostly take like five or six classes. But since UC ASCII is, is adapting quarter systems, which have like which goes into like 10 weeks, the schools are like um, there's going to be like midterm right after like a couple first weeks and there's going to be like final exams. So keep in mind and um, just like don't try to take like five or six classes because they will be very demanding. It's like very different from semester based school. So I think it will be good to take like three or four. And also remember that there's like a lot of fun classes in UCSC. So one class that I took last quarter is called Introduction to Acting. And I decided to take that class because we I, I don't have that such class in back in my home university. And that was um, really fun. And also some of my friends recommended like some um, class like dancing class. So yeah, just like um, try to explore many classes you can. There's like a lot of like fun classes only um, that can be provided in UCSC. And also other, other things that you should keep in mind that is like when you try to enroll some class, they might say like, oh, you're not um, allowed to enroll this class because this is this class is only for like junior and senior. And even though I'm a junior, like 
they said like I'm not allowed to enroll in because um um you, exchange students are recognized as a like freshman in the in the like enrollment website. So you should send the easy request, which is like sending a request like, oh, can I take this class? So if you just like send the easy request, they will approve you right away. So yeah, that's that's about it. Awesome. Thank you so much for that great information. Alrighty, Michael, how was your experience with the enrollment process? Um, I feel like Subin pretty much covered everything. Uh, I, I was gonna say, um, I would say the enrollment experience itself is 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 manageable. Uh, at first, it was kind of complicated, but I'm pretty sure you got, you you guys will get used to it. Um, I took three quarters, so like that's like six courses over the semester, and um, I would say it was it was tough. Don't don't think about it as you know. Um, three courses for one for a quarter and think about it as you know six courses for a semester instead because the workload uh do tend to be um very heavy so uh think about it and I did not actually drop below the 12 units so I didn't really know about the process itself awesome. thank you so much for that information Michael and lastly, Kena, did you have anything to add or anything you would like to share about your experience with the enrollment process? Um, I think they, they're they doing pretty well, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Oh, I want to say thank you. Thank you all so much. All righty, now we'll move on to enrollment in classes. So what was your experience like in the UCSD classroom? What were your course instruction like? How did exams go for you? And where did you go when you needed academic support? Michael, we'll start with you on this question. Um, sure. Uh, well, for me, the course instruction is definitely um, a lot different than what I'm used to in Hong Kong. I wonder if there's any Hong Kong students out here um, or anyone who studies in Hong Kong. Um, but uh, in, in there, the, the course instruction is mostly like lecture based, which is the the lecture is gonna be um like saying um things in bullet points and you're gonna have to memorize everything and like just listen to the lecture whereas at UCSD the course instruction is more like discussion based so like oftentimes within like an hour I would say the lecturer is gonna ask like five six questions to the class and like usually um people will actually answer if if teachers do that in my home in my home university, they will not get a reply. I'm pretty sure. Um, and the exams are, the exams are, there were you know it's I feel like in most schools the exams are going to be the same. Um, the um, I guess you need you do need to prepare a lot for UCSD because. The exams are going to be taking place um, within a week after the last teaching week, if I remember correctly. So like you barely get any time to like review all the materials. Um, so be sure to master everything before the exam week is, uh, itself. And then I didn't really go for academic support. I feel like that's something that I should have done so uh, I don't know maybe Subi then kind of could say something about this awesome thank you Michael okay Kana would you like to share about your experience in the classroom yes um like I would like um to answer the second and third question like what were the exams or uh like um like for me I took five courses last quarter so uh, most of them have one or two midterms uh, like the earliest start at the at the third week, yeah, and then the last one ends, yeah, you know, it's a midterm, but it ends at the eighth week, and so it's like, uh, just the the first two weeks, I was um, you know, adjusting to the to the yeah academic um pace, and then my midterm long long midterm period starts, and then yeah, it's the final. So um, I think there are advantages of this kind of settings because. You know the finals are for the finals most um like if your midterm ends at the 
by the end of the quarter, then you don't have to go over too much materials because you've already memorized everything for the midterm that ends late. So um, I kind of like that, that setting. Yeah. And also like for the forms of um, the exams, some of my uh, exams are closed book, which is ordinary, like some are open book. I think open book exams are more stressful because if you couldn't find the, the answer to the questions, then you feel you you're fall, falling behind. Yeah. And the other one is like a final project. You have to do a presentation of your project. It's like showing your idea in front of all the, the whole class. Um, that one is the one I like most because, you know, when people are questioning you on your project, that means people are interested in your program. Yeah. This can benefit those who are interested in academic research. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kana, for that information. So Ben, do you have anything you would like to add on this question? Um, sure. So just one thing I want to add on is like compared to my previous or home university, I think most of UCSC classes are like very interactive. So I mostly took business classes last quarter. And um, even though like some classes are like kind of lecture style, professor gave a lot of like time to talk with our classmates. So I was actually able to make a lot of friends from like in the class. And yeah, so like some of my friend asked me like, oh, how were you able to make friends? Like, how did you make your friends? And I think like one great source is class because um, it's also related to the third questions, like where do you go for academic support? I think I uh, mostly got academic support from my, my classmates mm -hmm. because um, it's kind of very easy to uh, make friends here because people here are very friendly. So you just like sit there and like say you just like hi to people next to you and they will also like love to introduce themselves and we become closer. You talk about like assignments and People here are very friendly and it's really like easy to become friends. And so just um, uh, keep in mind that um, many of UCSC classes are very interactive and um, uh, many of friends or many of classmates are willing to like share class materials with you. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have one more point for Hi. the last question on this screen. It's like... Um, you know, most of the courses in UCSD are podcasted, like you all, you all have the video or just the, the recording of the course. So don't worry if you are like in fact with COVID or you are, you have some emergencies and you missed any course, you can just review them on the yeah, podcast.ucsd.edu. And that one also helps me a lot when I was yeah, just um, trying to get used to the teaching style here because mm -hmm. some of my teachers, I find it really difficult to like understand their accent first, mm -hmm. but then I listen to the podcast at two times speed. Like after two weeks, I can understand them totally, yeah, fully. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I did as well at the end of the quarter. Um, nice. Thank you all so much for that great information. It's so good to know. Lovely insight. Alrighty, before we move on to the next topic, I wanted to briefly just go over this requirement of the 12 unit credit. Um, please make sure you plan to enroll or are enrolled in a minimum of 12 units at each academic quarter at UC San Diego. Um, international students, including our exchange students, are required to be enrolled full time. However, there are expect expectations oops, sorry, exceptions to taking less than 12 units prior to dropping to less than 12 units, you will want to come and speak to us at ISPO so we can go over it with you and see if you are eligible for one of the main reasons to drop below units. Um, as you can see on my screen, those reasons can cons um, consist of academic, medical, and final quarter. Um, be sure to come speak with us before you go below units so we can make sure you have the proper application and request submitted on your CVIS record so you can continue to meet maintain your status. Um, I will be posting a, um, more information about reduced course load and maintaining that full-time enrollment in the chat box for you all to be um, able to review at your own time. Alrighty, now I will pass it over to my colleague, Felicia, who will take us through the next set of questions. All right, so I'm also just going to 
back up to um, academic support and just throw out the teaching and learning commons. Um, it is another really great resource and they help students. Um, there's group um, study groups um, led by undergraduate students um, who are kind of experts um, in that subject matter who help tutor. There's also one-on-one -on -one tutoring, um, and they also have a writing center connected to the teaching and learning commons. So if you have to write, say, a history paper um, and you need help getting started or you want to make sure that um, you know, you're on the right track in answering the question. Um, they are there and available. And I know some of their offices are actually open seven days a week. So they are also open on the weekends to assist students. So the Teaching and Learning Commons is another really great resource um, for students for academic support. All right. So life beyond the classroom now. So um, we are going to talk about what you got involved in while you were here at UCSD or continue to be involved in. So, um, Subin, do you want to talk about your experience with um, student extracurricular activities and organizations? Sure. Um, I'm doing actually um, a lot of student extracurricular activities. I'm currently involved in two different student clubs. One is called Undergraded Investment Society, uh, which is like um, where students who are interested in like working finance area like gather together and have like workshops together and the other um, club that I'm joining is called a sustainable investment group this is also something like people interested in finance and in in like student clubs um, I think it's very great because you both get the professional aspects and you also get the social aspect so it's like you know, like if you join like student club, you can like get some like professional help. Like I was able to get help about like how to write resumes or how to write cover letters. And also not just that, um, there are like a, a lot of social events held by student clubs. So I was able to make a lot of friends um, from the social club as well. And um, also the other thing I want to mention about is like, there's like a lot of social events held, held by like at um, many student clubs and you don't sometimes you don't actually have to be the member of the club for example there's like a student club called CASA it is I think it's like Korean American Association it's not only for Koreans but it's for everyone actually somehow there's like more non-Koreans than Koreans and they have like a lot of events you can check the information on Instagram it's like K-A-S-A -A something and so there they have like boba events where you get to like hang hang out together with people and they like have boba together or you go to utc which is university town center mall or something and also like so there's like a lot of social events so just like feel free to join them and um and also like how to find some student club is in google just type ucsd student club and there will be website and if you like click that website there's like a list of all like um, UCSC student clubs and I checked it yesterday and there were like 500 clubs so there's like um, most of clubs that you can think of there's like dance club culture club academic club so yeah I um, definitely recommend you to be involved in student club wonderful and um, I know Michael you had pledged a fraternity um, and as part of your experience. Um, did you want to talk with students about and share your experience with that? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, well, in my first quarter, I didn't really meet people. Like I tried to go to events, random events like CASA, CASA, you name it, I went to it. Um, and like, I didn't really get that connection with people, like that um, deep connection that you would build over the, over the course of the you know organization and under the second quarter somehow I decided to pledge a fraternity and like at the time it was kind of intimidating because you know a fraternity is definitely like an actual like social organization and uh time I wasn't really confident about my English and like my accent and how I would speak to people since I only got a quarter left in my exchange program I thought well you know what maybe just try it out and like 
it ended up being the best decision I made um, throughout my exchange program, for sure, without a doubt. Because um, by pledging a fraternity, I get to find that deep connection, that that feeling of belonging to a family, uh, sort of. And like, I made so so much friends over the like first few weeks than I did within like the, the, over the last quarter. So like, um, it was it was really fun, and I ended up going on like trips, like um, to to just simple dinner, simple lunches, um, like over the week, and like it was it was really fun. I actually still talk to some of my um we call it pledge brothers uh it's kind of cringe but you know uh we call it brothers so i still talk to some of them so i i definitely do recommend you trying out just joining different organization it doesn't it doesn't have to be like a fraternity at all um i feel like as long as you put yourself out there join an organization you'll you'll get that um that the the people you you you'll meet people and make that connection you you want. All right, so um, we just wanted to make sure that um, all of our J one students know that work authorization, whether you are doing on campus or off campus employment, or looking at working staying in the U.S. after your program ends um, to do work, you do need work authorization, um, and it does go through ISPO. So if you are interested in doing any type of work um, in employment, then please just go to our iWork website um, and go to our advising and connect with an advisor and we can help you through the process. All right, so I know we only had one student who traveled internationally um, outside the U.S. while she was in her program. And so, Subin, do you want to talk more about the experience? Yeah, sure. So um, during the grace period and, and during the um, UCSC like, time, I was able to like travel a lot. Um, I travel a lot like um, many like major cities in the States. And I also like travel outside of U.S., which was like Canada. So like the first thing I want to mention is like travel a lot because there's like a lot of cool cities like New York, Chicago or like Quebec in Canada. And the second thing is like the um, bringing documentation is like really important. So um, just like don't forget to bring your like DS 2019 paper. Some like maybe you, you might not like need it, but it's always to like just best to bring it just in case like they might ask you something so yeah just like remember to bring your ds 2019 documentations and also when you travel domestics in the states like for example let's say you travel to new york or like boston um actually in many countries in the states or korea they don't really like require passport like when you travel domestic and sometimes like just the id card works but since we are not americans which means we don't have american id just like bringing Korean ID or bringing like non this non states ID can be a problem, so it's best to bring your passport because I tried it once. I like first like just like brought my Korean ID and I thought it would work, but they say like they don't accept it. So even though you're tra traveling domestic, it's always best to bring your passport. And even sometimes like for example, like I travel to Las Vegas or LA, which is um pretty much like close to San Diego. Um, you don't have to take airplane. You can just like travel by bus. But even though you, you're not using airplane, it's better to um, bring your passport just in case, because like some in some place, they require you to show ID to get in. And sometimes your non-America ID might not work in that case. So, yeah. So like when you travel, remember to like um, bring your copy of the 2019 paper and passport and just in case. And also uh, make sure to check like COVID regulations if you're tra traveling abroad to like Canada, because by the time I visit Canada, they require like some um, like um, like COVID requirement. There are some COVID PCR requirements. Tests. Yeah, something like PCR tests by the time. And um, I also have to launch like specific application to get into Canada. So if you decide which country you love to like travel, just like go to website. Um, don't don't just like listen to like um, uh, maybe because like 
it's it's always great to get help from like friends. But by the time your friend was traveling and now it, there can be like different like roles and regulations. So it's always best to like find the most recent updated information on like official website. Yep, that's pretty much it. Oh, Felicia, I think you're muted. I clicked and it didn't unmute me. All right. Um, so you you definitely covered so much of the information that we want our students to know. Um, you definitely want to check the ISPO website. So itravel.ucsd.edu. And we keep all of the regulations, um, COVID regulations and things um, that are ever changing by the day. Um, we keep that up to date on our website. We also have checklists of things to carry with you, whether you're traveling domestically or internationally. Um, so please check our website for that. Um, there's so much information. In terms of your DS 2019, so your official DS 2019 has what we call a wet signature. And so I signed almost, I think, all of your DS 2019s um, with a pen, and then we mailed it to you. Um, so you do want to carry your official DS 2019 with the wet signature with you. But we also highly recommend take a picture of it and keep a digital copy on your computer as well as on your phone, like save it as a favorite in case you put it through the washing machine or you end up in the pool on vacation and you need to be traveling and you need a copy of it. You can always go into your iPortal account and request an, um, a replacement DS 2019, and it takes a few days for us to get that to you, um, but you can come and pick it up in our office. So we do, again, we recommend get a digital copy, keep a digital copy, um, but know that you can also always get a replacement. Um, with the travel signature, DS 2019 for our J1 students, your travel signature is good for and valid for one year from the date it was signed. So I know that we do have some students who are here for an entire calendar year. So they will be with us through next fall. And we were signing these in the fall. And so if you are traveling and your signature is not valid anymore because it's past the one year, you would then need to, again, request an updated travel signature. So you always just want to make sure that all of your papers are up to date when you are traveling. So we just want to do a reminder about that for you. All right, so on to campus resources. So um, I know you all have some great information about campus resources that you utilized um, during your time here. So we're gonna start with Michael um, with um, the different resources you used. And I know you really took advantage of the health insurance yep, that we have. I did. Um, yeah, just uh, take a look at your insurance and like figure out the benefits. Because for me, I used like probably somewhere like two close to two thousand dollars worth of you know insurance. Actually, I got this Ray Ban glasses for like a couple of no no it's it's like twenty bucks or something. And uh, I got my I got all four of my wisdom teeth removed. I got um I just went uh to get medicine every time I got sick. So like just use your health insurance. It is worth so much. Yeah, that's uh, that's the single best thing I did, actually. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Subin, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, so ISPO will be definitely one of the campus resources that you're going to get a lot of help from because they hold like a lot of like social events, such as like coffee hour. I think that happens like almost like once a month. And also like um, you can... Um, like one of my friends get help with like her English. So there's like some mentor mentee program from like ISPO, I believe. And also there's like other like campus resources such as like for health and wellness, there's like um main gym in the middle of the campus. And also there's like a Remac. um yeah, Remac, which is like where you can like work out. Many of my friends love to go there. And the and there's also like many of you have not uh, notice yet but there's also swimming pool and it's free to free to use and there's also like rock climbing um center as well it's also free they're gonna rent the shoes for free as well i tried it a couple of times it's pretty cool so um 
Yeah, just like try to explore many things on UCSC. There's actually like many, especially like free things that you can get from. So yeah, take most out of UCSC. Wonderful. And then Kana, do you want to go next? Okay, so like um, I think you two have mentioned a lot, but I want to uh, mention is uh, the pronto. It's pronto. like the oh. the travel, the traffic transportation trans yeah it's like a e-card you can it's an app you can install on your phone and then you can travel by trolley by bus mm, yeah in inside san diego the public transportation is mostly free for you um and also like because we both uh our three panelists both live in i house i i think i house it's self is like a great resource it's like you're making friends from all over the world and we have really great activities like remember you you organized the sunday supper oh yeah yeah it's really interesting it's like um a lot of people's like i think most of the students in living in i house they're coming from all over the world and then we're sitting together to enjoy a, a supper yeah this is really fun yeah just to like elaborate on <clears throat> something <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> Some, something about Sunday supper is like <clears throat> it's an event held in I house, but non I non I house residents can also like attend as well. It's like uh, where we get to like um, hang out together and where we have a like meal all together. They're gonna assign you a table so like you can <clears throat> make a friend from your table as well. And it's just like um, event for international students happening in I house, but non I house residents. Can um can be attend. invited? Yeah, it can be invited as well. I think I believe it's happening around March. So yeah. Honestly, if you go around campus and like um there's some random nights, you'll find some events where you can get free food, free snacks, free drinks. So just put yourself out there, really. Perfect. And I did um put the link for the transportation website. Um, in the chat so that everyone can see and so you can see the um, U pass for the bus trolley and train that you can use and so the trolley does go straight through the UCSD campus it goes to downtown it passes um, through little Italy and other like fun places to go eat and hang out awesome okay so this was a question that I encountered at another event I went to where it was what do you wish that somebody had told you on your very first day in San Diego or on campus? And so we want all of our panelists to share um, their answer to that. So we're going to have Michael go first. Um, I have quite a few of them. Um, the first one would be to take easier courses. Um, to me, I'll, you'll definitely learn more outside of the classroom than inside this classroom, especially when you go on an exchange. I feel like the experience that you'll get outside of the classroom will be worth a lot more than the things that you learn inside the classroom. So it's not a must, but like think about it. Uh, just consider taking easier courses. Second will be to get myself out there. Um, at the beginning of the exchange program, I remember I stay in my room quite a lot and I kind of regretted it. I should have like just go on campus and, and not study in my room and like watch some random videos, you know. Uh, the third one would be to buy skateboards, scooters, anything that could save you time. UCSD is really, really huge. Like to say it's huge is like an understatement. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't use skateboard, I would take like half an hour from the from I house to like some of the classrooms. So buy something that will save you time. Um, fourth one would be to do your uh, to do your immunizations. This is important. Um, UCSD has a requirement for well, US US universities have a requirement to to like for students to have immunizations there's like a long list of innovation i remember it was like six seven shots and like i i i did it in my home university with uh by paying like close to 700 bucks and you could have used your health insurance as well to do that so 
use your health insurance is important. Um, and fifth one would be to make fr to make friends with non international students as well. I feel like this is because um, in my first quarter I was spending a lot of time with international students such as myself because I feel like local students would be a bit more reluctant to make friends with international students for some reason it wasn't true but that's what I thought and um, if you have non international students, local students. I feel like you'll get to immerse yourself in the culture a lot more. And plus, you'll get a free car, basically. So, um, yeah, definitely get a local friend. Thank you, Michael. Um, so I do have to put in a plug for the immunizations um, for anybody who is staying for spring quarter. So you'll be here basically all of your spring semester. So you'll be with us winter and spring. Um, there is a deadline for the immunizations to be completed by, I believe it's the first week of February. Um, if you do not have all of the immunizations submitted to our student health center by the middle of, I think it's February 9th, maybe don't quote me on it. Um, I think you were sent out that information, but you will get a hold put on your account to register for classes for spring if your immunizations are not done yet. So take Michael's advice, go to the health center and get your immunizations if you are missing any of them. And if you have questions, um, our student um, health center is the one, the one who oversees, oversees all of our hard. immunization records um, so you can ask them. All right, so Subin, let's... Let's hear what you wish you knew on the first day here. Sure. Um, so I have like three big advice. So first is get used to using Instagram because many of information from like your college, like ERC seven college or six college or many of the UCSC student club, they update their most recent information on Instagram. And also like when student, when social club have like social events, they um, upload their events on Instagram. So I think Instagram is like great source, like where you can get some information about like some fun events. So yeah, get used to Instagram. If you don't have one, I think it's better to have one if you want to like get most updated information. And the second advice will be um, don't afraid to talk to new people because many of friends, I mean, many of, so international friends, they are here, so it's all new for everyone. I'm pretty sure most of international students want to make many friends. So most of them are like very friendly and also local students are very friendly as well. So like, don't be afraid to like talk to people. I, I believe like it's very easy to become a friend here. And also the third advice will be like, um, don't be afraid about like speaking in English because English is like definitely my second language as well. Um, I'm still like not 100% like comfortable with speaking English, but if you like become shy or like try to just like speak in your first language, it will be like more harder and harder to improve your English. And like first, like when I arrived here, I thought like, oh, like since my English is not like fluent, maybe like um some like local students um. Because like, uh, I, like when I first arrived here, I spoke like really slow, like, oh, hi, my name is Sivan. I spoke really slow and I thought like some people might not like it. But I realized that actually like many people, they understand you and they um, there's like no problem with it. And as you like speak more in English, like you will likely to improve it a lot. So just like three, um, launch Instagram. Don't be afraid to talk to new people and don't be afraid to speak in English. Go. Um, so um, as for me, um, like what I would wish someone had told me when I arrived here would be like be open to embrace everything and do not set restrictions for yourself. And um, yeah, I think that's really important. That what exchange means to life. It's like adding diversity to, yeah, just since your cerebral cortex is still growing, it kind of bio bio, but yeah, I think you can understand it. It's very important to like open up when you're in, in such a young age that can reshape your life. So I would, I would also like to share one of my favorite um, quote from uh, Lord of Rain, the Rings. It's called um, home is behind the wall, the hat, and there were many paths to treat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, uh, yeah, I, I agree with all those, those tips. Uh, just one thing I would like to um, expand on Subin's point on, you know, speaking English and speaking to just random people. Um, you'll only be there for like either two quarters or three quarters. And like, who cares if you made a bad impression? Like you're going to be gone anyway. Don't don't worry about it too much. No one's going to care. So just just talk to people. Yeah, that's the best one you could do. All right, thank you all so much. Um, we are now going to open it up to see if anybody has any questions. And I do see one in the Q&A um, that Argeria is answering. Yes, but I'm going to read it out loud because I think it's a good one. Yes. Um, so we have a question that says, if a student is only staying here for one quarter, do they still need to get these immunizations? And the answer is yes. Even if you are only attending one quarter at UC San Diego, you are required to have this immunization re uh, record submitted to UC San Diego Health or UC SHIP. Um, so definitely make sure if you haven't done so yet to follow up with them to submit those in a timely manner. Um, if you don't have a hold, you may be having one soon. So uh, please be sure to be on the lookout for that and take action if you have not done so yet. It's a really great question. And feel free to um, ask us any other questions that you may have. And I believe Karina could probably answer this, but I, I think you need to ask the question in the chat or the Q&A um, because only presenters are able to actually speak. So we can't call on you to ask, have you ask a question out loud. But throw questions in the chat in the Q&A for us. Ooh, okay, we're getting some really good ones. Um, the next question that we've got is, is it possible to meet other slash contact exchange students here? Yes, uh, we, Felicia will be talking about this in the next upcoming slides, but we are hosting a really fun welcome event for our EAP students to get to know each other. Um, it'll be held on Thursday, January 12th, between 2 to 3 p.m. here at ISPO on our Eucalyptus Grove, which is just right outside our office. Um, it'll be a really fun way to get to know your colleagues, connect, um, hang out, you know, make friends. Um, so definitely check that out. We'll talk about it more in the next upcoming slides as well. But wonderful question. All righty. Uh, next question we've got is, is every internship considered academic training after the exchange program? Yes. <laughs> so if you are wanting to pursue any kind of internship, either it be paid or unpaid, after you have completed your program, at, uh, your exchange program here at UCSD, you will be required to receive academic training in order for you to pursue that internship. Um, so whether it's an unpaid internship or a paid internship, um, you will be required to have um, academic training in order to stay here and to pursue those that employment um, after your program has ended. Okay, let's look here, getting some more questions in. Okay, this is a good one that um, you may all be finding yourselves in. Um, the student, one of our students have asked, I'm still on a waiting list for a class that I want that I need to take for my school. Is there any way to get enrolled for it? So um, for those of you who may, ne may never have had this before in your home universities, UC San Diego has something called a wait list. It's long, it's excruciating. You have to check it every day and hope that you somehow get in. Um, but unfortunately, there's no other way to go around it. You do have to just be at the mercy of this wait list um, and hope that students drop or decide not to take the class and it moves you up to eventually being in the course. Um, if it is a class that you really do need, um, you definitely can and reach out to the professor, um, speak with the academic uh, departments um, that their course is being offered to see what can be done, if anything, for you to um, be on the top of the wait list or just kind of, you know, put a familiar face to a name if you are sending emails. Um, typically, if you are under, I would say, 
number 15 and below of the wait list, you typically have a high chance of getting into the class, but it does vary depending on the course. Um, if you are on the wait list and are pretty uh, low on the wait list, you may want to also be sure to attend those classes. So if you are added, you're not missing out on any important work that um, you may um, not, not be there for. But great question. Okay, um, looks like we have a question about J1 work authorization. So when I try requesting J1 work authorization work, it says I have to fill out an employer information. How does that work? Great question. So um, as you are all J1 students, in order for you to and be employed or pursue any employment during your program here, you are required to apply and receive work authorization um, for on-campus employment. The way that it works is you have to have a job first. So you have to have applied, accepted, and have a job offer letter for an on-campus position. Once you have that job offer letter, you will then come to our office and request for employment authorization, which is the J-1 on-campus work authorization to be employed um, and to receive authorization to pursue employment here. So you do have to go through the steps of applying, receiving the position, and then applying for work authorization. Okay, it looks like there is a question. Will there be another welcome event for those who can attend the EAP event, but most because of class? Um, so we do have other events that we are hosting. Um, I don't know if they are gonna be specific for EAP students, but as our wonderful student panelists have mentioned, we will always have coffee hour. Um, so if you're not able to attend the EAP specific event, please be sure to come to coffee hour and meet other students, friends, make friends. Um, you'll also be able to meet us. So if you have any questions or wanna get to know us or come up to us and say hi, you definitely can. Um, so that would be another really great way to kind of get to know other students here on campus. Alrighty, I'm just gonna pop into the chat box. I'm seeing that that's also being, oh, okay. looks like those are getting answered. Alrighty, let's see here. Where can I find more information about the immunization uh, requirements? You can definitely check that out on the Student Health and Wellbeing uh, website. Uh, we'll post it in the chat so that you all can access it. Um, and I'll post it right now so that everyone can go on there and kind of review the requirements uh, for that immunization. Alrighty, we'll wrap it up. So please submit if you have any, any last questions that you would like to ask us. Looks like we've got two about applying for jobs. So um, for application support and looking for positions on campus, you may wanna check out our Career Center. Um, it is a really great resource to our students. Um, it has uh, portals where students can access to find and filter on campus positions. Uh, we'll also post the Career Center in the chat so that everyone can also have that as a resource as well. Alrighty. You beat me to it. I was putting the career center. Oh, nice. Thanks, Felicia. All right. Um, so quickly, um, we are going to go over just some events and programs because I know um, you all had questions about this or some of you did. Um, so this is tomorrow from two to three. So it is our intercultural social hour, our international peer coaches who are undergraduate students, um, and some are international and some are domestic students. Um, they are here to help students. They're assigned to each college. So each of our seven colleges has their own international peer coach. Um, so they're able to put together events. They meet with students one-on-one. -on -one. They're um, here to help support you in any way. And the group also puts on um, different social events. And so intercultural social hour is our first one. Um, the 
they are making and spotlighting EAP students for the event tomorrow um, just to try to have um, as many EAP students as possible since you are just coming on the campus um, gather and be able to meet. So this is just one of the events that we are hosting. Um, we do ask students to register and it's only because we offer food and drink and snacks. Um, so we want to make sure that we have enough for all of our students. Um, and so if you have any questions about our um, international peer coaches, it is on our website, um, as well as the events are on our calendar. So that is one thing that we are going that we're spotlighting, and it is in front of our office. So it's right in front of the ISPO office. And then next Wednesday is our first coffee hour for winter quarter. So it is from nine to 10. It's also at our office outside in Eucalyptus Grove. So we will have coffee and pastries. Um, the ISPO staff, so myself and our jury are often like outside mingling with students and, you know, whoever happens to walk by. So um, it's not only for international students. We often have like our faculty, we have graduate students, we have our domestic students who want to meet our international students. So we're all gathering. So we just want that to be a time um, to give students and um, faculty and staff an opportunity to mix and mingle. And that is also where we often will do games, activities, and then raffle off prizes. So that's where, uh, was it Subin got her <laughs> coffee cup from there? Um, so we often give out um, different fun prizes for there. And then this is our I events calendar. So these are specifically ISPO events. Um, there is a larger UCSD calendar that has events for the entire campus, but these are specifically ones that we put together. And so um, obviously this orientation was on our calendar, um, coffee hour next week, but we also have a lot of different um, events. I know our first community where we will be serving tea and um, gathering is going to be next week. So that's another event that students can go to. And we try to mix them up. Sometimes they're in the evening, sometimes they're in the morning, sometimes they're in the afternoon to try and make it as accessible as possible for as many students to attend. And I will also just put um, a plug out for Triton Trekkers, which is also something that our office puts together. And so we coordinate oftentimes with the rec center and we do things like kayak the La Jolla Cove or do an evening hike somewhere. Um, and so we have some fun different events. Sometimes there is a cost associated with it. So if you're kayaking, um, you know, we do have to rent the kayak. So sometimes again, there is a cost associated, but it's usually pretty low cost. So we do recommend checking that out. It will also say if there is a cost. <laughs> Um, so these are some of our programs. So English in Action, I think, is one of the ones um, somebody mentioned their friend was part of. So our English in Action program is great. It's actually oftentimes community members who are paired one on one with a student on campus. And so they meet usually one to two hours a week, kind of just depending on the schedule. They will, you know, they'll ask, do you want to meet in person? Do you want to meet over Zoom? Um, what are you comfortable with? And it's basically just somebody else who is there to help practice English with you, to help you, you know, acclimate to San Diego. Um, oftentimes um, they are there with you for the duration of the year that you're here. There is, I will say, a cost associated with our English in Action program. It is $100 for the entire year, um, and it does pay for different events that they put together um, for you to go out with your um, person that you're partnered with um, to explore different parts of San Diego. So that's a great program, um, as well as you'll see our international peer coaches, um, Triton Trekkers. So again, a lot of the different programs that we put together. Awesome. Thank you so much, Felicia. Okay, we're wrapping up. Thank you all for staying on. I know we're a little bit over time. Um, before we come to a complete end, we wanted you all to take some time. If you um, can, please fill out this survey that we have created for our orientation. Um, it's a great way for us to know what we're doing, what we can do better, and just get your feedback on information that you would like to know or wish we had. Um, so if you have your, your phones, please um, go ahead and scan on our QR code. Um, if that QR code doesn't work, I'm also, also posting the link to the survey in the chat. Um, so you can access that that way as well. And I'll just give it one minute for everyone to take a picture and open up that QR code. 
All righty. Hopefully everyone was able to access it. Um, final reminders before we close out our session. Thank you all again for, for being here this evening. It's been so great talking with all of you and hearing from our student panelists. Um, please be sure, as we have mentioned throughout this orientation, to submit your check-in form to us. Uh, we are asking that those check-in forms get submitted by January 28th. Um, so please be sure to do that. Um, stay up to date with all of the things happening at ISPO by visiting our iUpdates calendar and checking your UCSC email for our weekly newsletter. Uh, we do have great information on there about maintaining your status, um, information about trends with travel, and also ways to get engaged and get to know other UCSD students here. So it's a really, really wonderful way to stay up to date. Um, and then lastly, we've just posted some really important links for you all. Uh, we do have weekly advising sessions. So if you did not get your question answered and you would like to speak with us, definitely feel free to drop in for our Zoom advising. Uh, we have our contact hours on our website at I icontact.ucsd.edu and follow us on social media. We do have Instagram where we post updates um, about our events and different things happening here on um, at ISPO and on campus. So be sure to connect with us and friend us um, so that you can stay up to date as well about all those information. All righty, everyone. Thank you again so much for joining us and again, staying on to, to um, hear the rest of the presentation with us. It's been so great welcoming you all to UCSD. Um, as we've mentioned before, just know that ISPO is here for you. So if you have any questions about anything, um, please feel free to stop by, send us an email or drop in for our Zoom advising. I want to send a huge welcome, oh, thank you to Subin, Kana, and Michael uh, for all of that great information they've provided to us today. Um, and thank you for joining us. All right, everyone, have a good rest of your evening.